it's science time. 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 Welcome back to the show. STEM mania today. And I'm so excited because one, I'm standing up and we're doing science today. So I can totally move. And second, we're doing simple machines. Sorry. It's going to be awesome. We've got so many cool things we're going to talk about today. It's an action-packed day. We're going to touch base on lots of cool stuff. But most importantly, we're going to allow you to kind of continue the learning at home. So big special thanks to the Dave Metro Library for making STEM Mania possible. Uh, the partnership we have with them is fantastic. We have been so excited to continue working with them and it allows us to bring cool stuff like this to your house. Now, I know you're thinking, what is inside this box? So if you saw the teaser yesterday on the Facebook page, uh, what we have here is a mystery box. So question mark, something's going on inside. I've got it attached up here to a string. It makes some noise because it's attached to uh, a wheel and axle. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But what I have here, so there's nothing going on up here you can't see. It's literally a string tied to our light rack, to our light rig. And what I'm going to do here is when I pull the string down, the box goes up. And the question is, is why and how? So we're going to explore a couple things today, and then we're going to come back to this. So I'm going to slide this over here just a little so it's kind of out of my way. So keep your eye on the question mark all day. Mm, what are you thinking? I know, it's pretty simple when you actually think about it, but we're going to talk simple machines today. So we're going to actually introduce the six simple machines to all of you and just kind of show you what some of them are, how they work, and the advantages of it. So why simple machines? Simple machines make work that we do more easily completed. So we can complete the work more easily. How? Because these give us mechanical advantage. All right, so work. For example, I've been waiting for this experiment all week, and I have my weights here and the jokes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is how I get strong. I'm like, Wah! I forget how many grams this is, but that's 20 grams. Each one of the big ones is 20 grams. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine times 20 is 180. And then I have a little five grams. So I have 185 grams on that. And when I lift it, I can just feel the biceps working. But I'm working. Did you hear me say work? Because work, scientifically speaking, work is when we apply a force to move an object a certain distance. And that's what simple machines help us do. They help us reduce or make work easier for us to accomplish. So I have spring scales all over the place. <laughs> this is the one I wanted. This is a spring scale, all right? And what it's gonna help us today, it's gonna help us see how much work or how much force is being applied. And there's a spring in here that has a certain tension, and when I pull down on it, the string, the spring expands, and we can read how much force is being exerted. All right. So we're going to be using this today to help us see if different things, different simple machines, help us reduce the force needed to move an object. Say, for example, these weights. And I'm just going to look this up for a second, so you can see what happens when I lift this up. You can see that the spring expands and I'm applying a force of about 250 grams, all right? So what we have here are 2.5 Newtons. And so that is a unit that we measure force in when we're doing science. So to lift that up, it uses about 250 grams of force or 2.5 Newtons. Now, if I wanna move this thing more easily, there's some simple machines that we can talk about using. And let's talk about what those are first. We've got wheel and axles. So wheel and axle, we see that every day in our house. Um, we see when we turn a knob, we're using that wheel and axle. When we drive in our car, there are wheel and axles all over the place. We also have um, screws, all right? It's one of our six simple machines. We have a screw. We also have pulleys, which I have hanging right here. We're gonna use this here in just a second. Levers allow us to leverage things. So this is gonna be one of our levers today. Just things I have laying around the house to show you that simple machines are all over. 
We also have an inclined plane, or we can call that a ramp, something to push something up or pull something up versus lifting it straight up. And then lastly, we have a wedge, like a nail. Do I have my nails out? Here we go, got a nail right here. Not this kind of nail, this is C. <laughs> we got nails. All right, so wedges, inclined planes, uh, levers, pulleys, screws, and then wheels and wheel and axle. All right, so let's get into some of these things. So right here in front of us, we have this weight, right? And so we're gonna talk pulley, this pulley first, and it's one of our more complicated things because you can see me behind me, I have this pulley rig also. So we're gonna put a little bit of energy and talk about, put a little energy into talking about uh, pulleys. So what we just had here is that we just said that this here uses about 250 grams or 2.5 newtons to lift it up, all right? We're assuming we're having a constant force applied to it to lift it. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna attach this pulley to it, and a pulley allows us to redirect a force, right? So instead of me lifting this straight up off the ground, and if it was on the ground, I'd have to bend over and lift it straight up. It could be really difficult. It could be really, it is really heavy actually, the 200, almost nearly 200 grams, um, super heavy. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put this around my pulley here, and I'm gonna only use these red single pulleys today so we're consistent with what we're talking about. And I'm gonna put this here. Now, when I lifted it up, I could feel the force needed to lift it up. I was doing that work. I'm still gonna lift it straight up, but now I'm able to pull it and use the leverage of my body to help me pull it up. Now, it's still reading 250 grams or 2.5 newtons. It's reading the same amount um, because look, we have one line of tension on this weight still, okay? We have one path and it's just being redirected, but it's still one, all right? So we're lifting it up and it's basically going up straight up. But what I did is I wanted to build something to show you and share with you how a pulley gives us mechanical advantage and allows us to move something with less force. So what I have here, I'm gonna slide, should be able to see this. Should I bring it up really close? Yeah, we can move it. I built this so you guys could see, hopefully this works the way it's planned to work. I'm gonna have to step to the side. This is one of the reasons I was wanting to do the work standing up today is because we've got lots and lots of stuff to move and make a mess with. So I'm just, these are basically uh, fish weights, right? So you go fishing, catch a fish, you want to see how big and heavy it is, it allows us to see that. So I'm gonna attach that there, I was just using it as a placeholder. So I'm gonna put that there. Whoops. There we go. Don't fall on me. And we have this board here so that we can see past things. I'm gonna unhook this. Now, it took us, what was it, 250 grams of force to lift that up, I'm gonna just put that down there, so it's just sitting right there. And now I'm gonna pull on it again. So before I pull on it, I wanna show you a couple things. We have this pulley, and now we have this string here, it's tight, and this string here, it's tight on this point. All right, so now we have these two lines of tension, and now when I pull, lifting the same amount of weight, and it's only at 150, oh, about 100, 20, 130 grams. So that's half of 250 essentially. So obviously my scale is not a perfect measurement, but what we can show you is that the amount of force needed to lift this now is half. And isn't it cool just watching the pulley work? So we have the fixed point up here on the screw, which causes tension on this side. And then we have this side, which we're pulling on, which causes tension on the other side. And basically what we're doing is we're causing and allowing two forces to move upwards here. So we have force lifting this up. So we have twice the tension lifting it up, which means we're exerting half the force. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, pulleys are super cool. And you can see here that, ah, my backboard's falling. You can see here that we're using a minimal, minimal amount of force. Now I'm gonna connect that all back up really quick. Actually, I can take this one off because we're gonna to move to the backside. 
rig this up. I'm hoping this will still work. I'm trying not to. Ah, that's okay. We're gonna take this one off because we're gonna flip it around. And instead of using two pulleys, we're gonna try four pulleys so that we can see what's going on with the strings. Now, these um, are double pulleys. So I have two pulleys down here and I have two pulleys down here. And basically what I've done is I've taken, we're gonna put the same amount of weight on, so we're gonna hook this all up. The best part about working with pulleys and things like that is even if you don't have pulleys like I have, you can use washers, you can use different things to create a pulley, and that's what we're gonna do here in a second. I'm just gonna hook that there. So we have that hooked up. I'm gonna unhook this down here from that screw. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be really careful. There we go. I don't wanna lose any tension on this because these strings start to come off and they get really tricky to put back on. Now you can't see it there. All right, so I'm way over here now because the string is really long. So the weights are sitting and I'm trying to keep it. So we have the same weight and now I'm at about 80, less than that, 60. So I'm barely exerting any force and it's lifting up the same weight. And so this is what pulleys do. They allow you to easily pull that's so cool. It's amazing the difference in the feel. Like you can feel that there is barely any force that's needed to lift it. All right, so the input force, when I'm pulling, this is the input force and the output force is over there. And we can technically measure the input force and the output force, and that's what we're gonna do right now. So I'm gonna set this back down. I'm gonna hook this back up. We got one more I wanna show you. Keep this nice, keep all the tension on here. It's like a, oh, I lost it up top. Did you see it? No, this is the crazy part. Ah, and science gets crazy. But here's the really cool part. I can just set that there for now. And I come back here, I can move this out of the way. And I can hook all this stuff back up. Oh, now we're jammed. We'll be jamming. Get those back all on the pulleys. So if you have questions about pulleys, let us know. If you can think of pulleys somewhere in your life, let us know. Pulleys are everywhere. I think I got it connected. I'm gonna keep tension on, oh, I lost it again. I lost it. This is the only problem with doing live television. Is when things go awry, you gotta fix them. But that's half the fun of doing this as well. To show you guys, ow, I got my hair stuck. Ow, that hurt. All right, so I think our pulleys are all set up. Perfect, perfect. And what I'm gonna do here, so I've got that pressure applied I'm gonna make this shorter. So I'm just gonna tie this really quick right here. So we have another hook. So I can pull on this. All right, so now what we have is I've got these two uh, readers. They're gonna read how much force I'm exerting. I'm gonna turn them both on. I have to be careful here because it's gonna... All right, so that is on. I'm gonna turn this one on. Maybe. All right, so this one's reading. It's taking a second to turn on. Probably to calibrate. And then we're gonna tear. All right, so I'm gonna hit the button tear. I'm gonna hit the button tear. And then I'm gonna pull. Oh, wow. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling against this and hopefully in a second it's gonna lock in. This one is almost at, I'm pulling with an input force at almost one kilogram. So 0.9. And this one is over here at 3.2 kilograms. 
So that's roughly four times the force that's being applied to this. So we're going to try it one more time. That's the whole point I wanted to show you. I'm going to tear it. The tear means that I'm zeroing it out. I'm going to pull really tight. That screw down there is giving a little bit. We're at 1.1 here, input force, and it's fluctuating right between 4.2 and 4.4. So that is four times the amount of force. The input force here is a certain amount, 1.1, and this is exerting 4.4 kilograms of force on this point here. And so we can see that this gives us a lot more force and allows us to easily increase the force so that we can make work easier. And I'm breaking the sweat. I'm working hard. One of the best ways to understand and work with pulleys is to play with pulleys. That was so cool. I wasn't sure if it was going to work, but it did. And that's all that matters. All right, so pulleys. I'm not pulling your leg. You should try to make one of those at home. I'm going to slide this string out of the way. So now we're at, that's out of the way. All right, one of the other things I really like are these things called levers. Well, this is a hammer, but it can also be used as a lever. And what is a lever? A lever gives us advantage, so it gives us leverage to move something that's otherwise difficult to move. So I'm gonna show you here, I'm gonna give you an example. Um, so I've got a little PVC pipe. And then I am going to put this right on here. Now the PVC pipe's gonna to wanna to roll, so I'm gonna to have to kind of hold it just a little bit. But what's going on here is I have the weights, I can put the weights here, and then I can lift my weights using a lever. So I'm, I'm applying the force, a down force here, it's causing this to go up. Now what's really cool about this, this is called a fulcrum, it's the pivot point. The pivot point allows us to adjust how the force is acting from over here. So I can shorten this, I can make this side shorter and this side longer, and when I do that, it's actually easier to push. All right, so I'm changing, I'm essentially applying the same force, but now it's easier to lift because I have more leverage, all right? So depending on where this is, now if I bring this over here, I'm not sure this is foam core, I'm not sure what it's gonna do, but I have to push, I have to exert a lot of force to get those 200 grams up. And de definitely when it's over here, ah, no, it lifts up much easier. And that's not because the five grams fell off, it's just because it's a lot easier. So here's what we're gonna do. I've got this really cool balance and I want to show you a couple things. So you can see, this looks like uh, something you might see at a play park, right? Looks like a seesaw. So here's our fulcrum right here in the center. I've got a nail going through the center of this, so it's balanced. I have actually worked to try to get it as balanced as possible. But you know when you go to the play park and you're sitting and you get on the seesaw and you and your pal, they sit right about the middle, so that you also sit right about the middle to actually balance out the seesaw, right? This is like a lever. Now what happens is while you're getting on here, your friend says, okay, hold on. They start to get off and it tips down. But what they do is they pull the side down. The same kid, they weigh exactly as much as you do. They hop on the end and now you're stuck up in the air. Have you ever experienced that? I know I have. Uh, my, my parents and my brothers and sisters used to do that to me. So that's like a real life example that I remember vividly. But then what's really interesting is I have another friend who's at the park also, who happens to weigh the same as I do, who happens to weigh the same as the other person. So now I can put this here, the same spot, and now we balance each other out. In fact, these are each, each 10 grams of, of mass. They have, they're each 10 grams. And so now it balances it out. And so what you can start to do is you can see that the force that's applied here doesn't have to be as great to make this over here work. So if you're on a seesaw with somebody and they weigh, say, four times as much as you, and they get on, I'm gonna put four of these on here, and you, they, you guys both get on the seat that's the furthest back, you're not gonna be able to swing. So you're gonna say to your friend, Hey friend, 
I need you to scoot up a few. So they're gonna scoot up a little bit. I'm gonna go halfway. We'll see what happens there. Still unbalanced. I'm gonna come all the way to the front. I mean, it's not very fun if you're sitting this far up on the seesaw, but now it's unbalanced in your favor. So I'm gonna to start to slide forward here. And eventually you guys can now get balanced again and still have fun, even if your friend is heavier than you are. And you can use this not just on a seesaw, but when you're lifting heavy objects off the ground, right? So you can use like a dolly. Have you ever seen a dolly where they put something under the front of it, it has like a lip, it slides underneath it like a wedge, and then you lift it up on the wheel and axle and you slide it across. It allows you to do work more easily. But this here, I thought was a great example of a lever because you can leverage science from the fulcrum here. The further away you go, the more force you can apply. So even though something may weigh a lot more, you can use a little bit of science to help you lift it up into the sky. So pretty cool, right? You can do that at home too. Whoop, 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 whoop. All right, so one of the other things that I really love when it comes to simple machines are wheel and axles, right? So wheel and axles, pretty simple. Um, a wheel and an axle is this idea that you have an axle and allows you to, so here's our axle and I'm gonna use this as my wheel. Even though it's not connected, you can imagine there's a wheel right there and it allows us to move, I can turn the wheel and then I can use that axle to lift something up. And if you've ever seen like old TV shows or if you know somebody who might have a well, like an old fashioned well, the well sits there and they throw the bucket down it fills up with water and then they have to crank the wheel to lift up the bucket of water. It makes work easier. You can use this leverage. And if it's really heavy, you can make this longer, make the lever longer so you have more leverage to turn the axle. And then it just continues and continues and continues. All right, so wheels and axles are really cool and actually um, going along with some of our fun facts. We brought the fun facts, fun facts. Science, technology, engineering, math. We brought the fun facts, fun facts. Science, technology, engineering, math. Egyptians used ramps and levels uh, and levers while constructing the pyramids. They also used wheels and axles to move really heavy stones. And I'm going to show you that with this. So having this sitting here, I can slide this over here. It's really hard to push it, right, to move it from point A to point B. But what I can do is I can take a couple of axles, I can put them down. Wait, let's make this bigger. And now what I can do is I can put this on here and I can move this very simply. So these are huge stones, I can move them across distances and then I can take my axle out, I put it under and I can keep moving my object with ease. So wheels and axles are something that's uh, pretty cool. Plus another really cool fun fact, your bicycle makes use of pretty much all simple machines. So I want you to look at a bicycle, I want you to think how are all of those simple machines connected to it? So wheel and axle, levers, pulleys, um, wedges, inclined planes, you tell us how does a bicycle connect to all of the simple machines. All right, so we're gonna actually turn and talk about a famous scientist now, Rube Goldberg. And some of you maybe have heard of Rube Goldberg. Rube Goldberg wasn't just a famous scientist, he was actually um, a cartoonist also who lived uh, between 1883 and 1970, and he drew cartoons, and then he essentially started creating these cartoons with these really complex things that made life more complex. Um, instead of making life easier, he took a simple task and then used all these machines to make it happen. So turning on a light switch or turning on the toaster using machines and different things, uh, what ended up happening is it became this phenomenon. And we are going to honor Rube Goldberg today with two of our scientists who actually created um, a Rube Goldberg machine for us. And we're going to show you that right now. Hello, 
there. Today I'm going to show you how our Rube Goldberg machine works. So we have our metal model that would start from here. We mark it so that it is the same every time. And it would go down this long track. All the way down. And then it would jump off. And, and gravity would pull it down. And we position this wheel and axle correctly so it'll hit it and spin, which will knock over some of these dominoes and they'll all fall over. And then this will knock over this, and that'll knock over that, and it's like dominoes, but it's getting bigger until this falls over and the ball rolls down. And it knocks over the book right here and this pulley system right here. When the when the book is knocked over, it yanks up this lever right there, which knocks over the car, and then this which knocks knocks over the ball, uh, which makes these dominoes all fall and then rings the bell. That was so cool, right? So Paige and Charlotte are two young scientists that I've known for quite some time now. And even since they've been wee little scientists, they have always been interested and curious about STEM. And so when we were doing this episode, um, I reached out to them and said, would you be interested in building me a Rube Goldberg machine? And they jumped right on it and they built that amazing Rube Goldberg machine. So we actually have a small little interview with Paige and Charlotte that we're gonna show you. And basically it's just us talking about what they built, how they built it, and why it wasn't so important. So it's a couple of minutes, um, take a peek at it. It's really awesome. And then after that, we're gonna get into what's inside this box. It was pretty awesome to see your design. And I wanna ask you, did you guys have fun building that thing? Yeah, yeah it was a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, we learned a lot, yeah. Tell me what you learned. We learned all about the simple machines, and we learned a, a, a bunch about uh, it's okay to fail. And actually, just because you said that, I'm going to show a clip of that ongoing failure to the audience right here. So we'll see if it works. Oh, it didn't work that nope. time. Sometimes it doesn't build enough momentum. Second time, didn't work. Did you have a lot of problems on the Rube Goldberg machine at other places or was it just that one place? It was pretty much every spot needed multiple tracks. So we, uh, we, uh, uh, we taped it down to the ground so it wouldn't move when the marble hit it. We used uh, different kinds of uh, markers and things to mark where to put them. Like we made sure that it was consistent where we put the marble each time yeah. and where we put all the dominoes and things. Yeah. But even that, it still didn't work but yeah. a few times. You mentioned simple machines. What did, do you remember anything specifically from your design that, or like which simple machine you enjoyed trying to figure out the most? Oh, uh, totally uh, the, pulley. the pulley. Yeah, the pulley was machine. really fun. Yeah, we had to figure out how we could get the pulley to pull uh, a lever that would knock the car over and hit the ball and knock over the dominoes. So yeah, I like that. I, I, and that was where you had the big um, colorful like rubber ball, right? Where it, it pushed it and it hit the book? Yeah. 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 And then that pulled on the pulley. Actually, it wasn't rubber. It was rubber, though. It was a wooden, a wooden ball. No, no. He's talking about the other one. That oh, yeah, the, the other one. Yeah, that was a rainbow one. Oh, the rainbow, yeah, the rainbow one. That's the one that knocked over the book, right? That part 
was actually what we struggled a lot on the most yeah. because we had to figure out uh, dominoes, they weren't heavy enough to push over the big ball, but we need something heavy enough to knock over that book. Yeah. So we had to try to like gradually like uh, get one pieces that were like heavier and then heavier and heavier until it went all yeah. the way up. Did you have any helpers at your house that helped you out with this? We had uh, our parents. <laughs> we had, uh, we had uh, our dad. Our dad yeah. did a lot of the work with us. Yeah. Okay, cool. And did he learn anything also? Oh uh, yeah, we yeah. we all we all worked together and we figured it out. At first, the design um, when the dominoes uh, went knocked up the stairs and knocked the ball over, it used to not be the ball. It was a roll of tape, but yeah. the roll, it was supposed to knock over a roll of tape. But the roll of tape it didn't work as well. So. One question I have for you guys still is, if someone out there is watching this right now, what would you tell them about building their own Rube Goldberg machine? What would be your words of advice to someone who has never built one before? Um, well, most of all, uh, we actually took a whole day building it. And you have to accept that even though you think, you think it might work at first, it might not, but that's okay. You, just, you learn from the experience and you try again and again. And eventually, it might not, it might even not turn out exactly how you want it to, but, but it will definitely look cool and it will work. It, you just have to set your mind to it. All right, I like that. Put your mind, set your mind to it. What about you, Charlotte? What would you tell somebody? I'd say, you don't have to make it huge. It can be really good, just like a really small one. Like, they take a really long time and you just got to go with that and you don't have to make a huge one like YouTubers do. You you can just make one any size you want. You can make a mini one that long if you really want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I think, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. It, or you could make a huge one if you wanted. <laughs> well, I think those are two great pieces of advice for our audience who is watching this. And I know they're probably saying, if those two young ladies could build one of these, I should give it a try also because that's what science is all about, right? Let's yeah, try things. I, I would say give it a try. Science is all about uh, exploring and learning all about the world and engineering and, and sometimes even mechanics and figure, figuring out your way and yeah. to figure it out, yeah. That is awesome. And what I loved, and, and we're gonna end here, what I loved is the, the things that you guys used were just things you already had at your house, right? You didn't go out and buy anything. It was just, these yeah. are things that you have and they're available so that other people can go around their house and find really cool stuff to, yeah. to maybe build this with, right? Build a Rube Goldberg. You don't need to go to the store and buy a fancy kit. You can, you can just rummage around your house and find books to knock over each other or dominoes or string or tape, yeah. anything really. Yeah. Well. I, I couldn't have said it better. You, you two are role models for all the kids out there watching. Uh, we love seeing our young scientists at work. And I appreciate you guys taking the time to build a Rube Goldberg machine for me. And uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Keep exploring, keep having fun. And remember, more fun stuff on the way. And yeah. always question and always wonder. Yeah. All right. So those two little scientists did a great job with that. And the favorite part about that for me is that they use these simple machines to build this Rube Goldberg machine, but they really focused on their effort and that it failed and it failed multiple times and they kept at it. And that's really what science is all about. This idea that we are going to use science to learn about this world and have fun doing it. So thank you Paige and Charlotte, that was amazing. We have two more simple machines to talk about really quickly and then we're going to get into what's inside this box. So, I've got this nail and I hammered the nail into this already. Right? So the hammer, the nail is in there and the nail is acting like a wedge. It's almost like a knife, a kitchen knife. When you cut it through butter, it goes and it goes right through the butter with ease and it takes the force and it takes the force from the hammer hit and it pushes down into the wood and pushes outwards. And that's what a, that's what a wedge does. Um, you see a wedge with an ax, um, you see a wedge with a nail. But then, going back to what we talked about with levers, I can take my hammer because there's no way I'm able to pull that out straight out with my hands. So I'm gonna take my hammer, which has this piece on the back, and I can easily 
pull the nail out because of this lever and this acts like the fulcrum. The last one we really haven't touched too much on is this screw. Now a screw is awesome because a screw takes basically a wedge like a nail and it wraps this inclined plane around it. And what happens with that is I have a drill. It allows me to combine, it basically takes this force and it pulls this into it. So if I wanna take two pieces of wood or something else, I can put this through here like this. Oops, that's a bad example because I, I don't wanna drill it all the way through because it'll go into my table. That would not be good. But basically the screw, the inclined plane is digging through the wood and it's grabbing the wood around it and it keeps turning and it keeps digging it further into it. And, and I made something that looks like that too. And we're going to, I'll, I'll show this in another video later this week. It's kind of like a, a fun little activity, but it's an Archimedes screw. And basically we can use this to move things like water uphill. And I'm gonna show you that later in another video. It's kind of like a, a little teaser video on this. All right, so simple machines, they're all around us. We've had lots of fun talking about them. Um, you know, jokes on me because we still have a couple of jokes that we want to share. K O K E S, Mr. C, science jokes, yeah, all the best. K O K E S, try not to laugh. That's the test. All right, so here are a couple of jokes. I was cutting cheese into very small pieces with a knife. The knife was great, but a machine to help would have been greater. <laughs> like a greater? <laughs> this is a C. You should have seen her face. All right. What did the pulley... What did the pulley... What did the pulley like best about its position? What did the pulley like best about its position? It was the center of a tension. Center of a tension. We talked about tension today. And what is the cutest season? What is the cutest season? Autumn. Autumn. And um, yeah, those are our bad jokes for the day. <laughs> K O K E S, Mr. C, science jokes, yeah, all the best. But, take a look at this. I want you to think about what's inside this. I'm pulling down on it, and it's pulling up. And actually, we talked about building this. I wonder, I'm gonna open it up so you can see what's inside. So when I pull down, it lifts up. And you might be saying to yourself, what's going on? So we're gonna open this up. I'm gonna take my scissors. I have this taped. I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna show you what's going on. And it's really simple. I have a string attached to the bottom, which is an anchor. All right, just have this washer. This washer up here is acting like a pulley. And then I have my string. So when I pull down, because this is anchored, it pulls the string to the anchor spot and it brings this down, which causes it to go up because the point up top above me is not moving. So when I let it go, it falls back down. And when I pull it, I gotta hold this open so you can see it. When I pull it, it lifts it up. So we're using a simple machine to build this pretty simple mystery box. Um, so here's the question. I challenged uh, Paige and Charlotte to build a Rube Goldberg machine, which I'm going to encourage all of you to try as well because you have all the materials at your house already. But I'm also going to encourage you guys to try to build yourselves a mystery box using simple machines. So that is my challenge to all of you. I hope you enjoy the show today. Keep learning, keep having fun. And big thanks to the Dayton Metro Library for making this all possible. Uh, we're going to have some awesome books you can check out. Um, go ahead and we have links in the description. We have an activity sheet for you in the description as well to keep the learning going at your house. So big special thanks to everyone who makes this possible. Thanks for you guys joining us each and every week. And most importantly, have a great day.